Hello everybody, welcome back to Life Stories. My name is Trent, and I hope you're doing awesome as always. Today, got more stories coming right at you from Reddit slash I don't work here lady, hoping for some good ones today, so buckle in and let's get started. Our first story is titled, Get My Bags. In the early 90s, I was the concierge at a five-star hotel, and in those days, wore my hair short to conform to the hotel dress code. I changed careers late in the decade and was able to grow my hair and wear it long, which is my preference. This happened recently, 25 years since my hotel days. My wife and I were staying at a fancy hotel one night and were headed out to a wedding reception. I was dressed in a full suit and tie. I don't like it, but I do clean up good. It was a hot summer afternoon and I was standing out in front of the hotel, holding our large wrap present and waiting for my wife to pick me up in her car. An airport limo pulled up and a lady wearing a leopard skin jacket and too much makeup got out. She had a tiny dog on a leash with a matching leopard jacket. We made brief eye contact, but I looked away as I was laughing to myself over the matching outfits. My phone rang and it was my wife. She couldn't navigate all the one-way streets to get to the front of the hotel. While I was talking to her, I heard a far off, excuse me, then a closer one and then a screechy one right next to my ear. I half turned around to see Leopard Lady, who will be referred to as LL, was right next to me. I was standing to one side of the revolving doors. I was pretty sure I wasn't blocking her, but I moved a few steps away to give her room. She followed me and said, excuse me, again. So loud, my wife asked who it was. I finished with my wife and turned to LL and said, what? LL says in her snooty entitled Karen voice, Now that you're finally done with your phone call, are you going to get my bags or not? Still not fully comprehending what was happening, I literally spun around to see if she was talking to someone, a bellman perhaps, that had snuck up behind me. There was no one. She had put her hands on her hips now and was standing off against me. Even the little doggy had adopted an aggressive stance. Well, are you? She said. I said, I don't work here, lady. Do you think this hotel would really hire someone with haircut like mine? She huffed and said, Well, if you won't do it, then run along and find me someone who will. I told her again that I didn't work here and she should ask inside the hotel. She huffed and stamped off to the front desk. 30 seconds later, the valet driver arrived, having brought a guest car up. I gave him the heads up that the luggage in the limo was a check-in. Also gave him the heads up about LL. The hotel's concourse was full now, and I saw my wife's car on the street waiting to turn in. I walked towards her to save her from having to turn in. By the time I got to her, got the present in the trunk, got in, and drove past the hotel, I saw LL had a valet driver, another bellman with a cart, and was standing, hands on hips, having them get her multiple suitcases. As we slowly drove by, we again briefly made eye contact. I considered giving her the finger, but settled for flipping my hair as my parting touché. Hey, icing the Karens with class. I'm also jealous. I can't grow my hair out without looking like a psycho crazy person. And moving along, our next story is titled, Woman Wants to Talk to Manager That Doesn't Work for Bus Company. Our cast is me, OP, L, Lady, SM, Site Manager, and MM, My Manager. A bit of backstory. I work for a security company. The places we patrol are sites that pay the company, and I work for one or two of their security officers to patrol the area and have a certain information available at times. I was working at a bus company that drives all around the country, taking people wherever they paid to go. I'm supposed to know when buses depart, when buses arrive, and where the smoking areas are. Other than that, my duties are to patrol the property and make sure no homeless people are sleeping on the property, and to make sure everyone has a ticket, and if they don't, I have to kick them off the property. My shift was from 11 that night till 7 in the morning. Since I'm awake for 17 hours a day, my face becomes less than pleasant, and I get a serious mean look, even though I just don't have the energy to keep a neutral face so early in the morning. Around 3 a.m., a woman waiting for her bus came up to me while I was writing in my daily log. Do you know if the vending machine takes fives? I learned my lesson with vending machines years ago and had never used the ones on site, so I didn't actually know. Uh, no, I'm sorry, but if you ask SM at the desk, she can tell you. What? You should know this. 
That's unprofessional. I only know what I need to know. I stopped using vending machines a while back. What's that supposed to mean? Are you calling me fat? The lady was a little heavy, but I wouldn't say fat. Ma'am, I didn't say that. I just don't personally trust... F you! And here I thought maybe a millennial would actually have some darn manners. At this point, I stand up and step up as security. Ma'am, if you don't calm down, you're going to have to leave the property. You aren't going to lay a finger on me, you little pervert. I won't need to touch you, I say. This is federal property, so you will be taking up with the authorities if you don't calm down. I want to see your manager. You want to see my manager. What, are you deaf too? Yes, she says. At this point, SM, who was in the back doing paperwork, came out from the commotion. Is there a problem? I want this man fired at this very moment. He insulted my weight and tried to assault me. One of the passengers that was still awake backed me up and said what was really happening. Ma'am, I can't fire him. He doesn't work for, insert bus company name. L was speechless and confused. Ma'am, she isn't my manager. My manager is somewhere in the city right now. He's doing his job to his company's standards, so I have no need to notify his manager. I demand you call his manager, she says. Fine, no problem, I say. I pull out a radio that stays on site, which we use to report incidents to our managers, big and small. Uh, this is OP at site, company's name. Come in, MM. This is MM, go ahead, said the walkie-talkie. We have a lady causing a disturbance, and she wants to talk to you, because she has a complaint about me. Is she nearby? Right in front of me. MM says, Ma'am, if you don't settle down, OP is authorized by that company to kick you off the property, and you'll have to pay a fee to reschedule your ticket. If you refuse to leave, PD will be involved. OP, make sure you write an incident report on this when it's all said and done. He hung up and left L baffled. I won't accept this! Let me talk to him! She reached for the radio, and I pulled back. Ma'am, this is your last warning. You've been disturbing the other passengers. Everyone was awake now and pissed. Twisting my words and actions and tried taking company property from my possession. Sit down, shut up, or get the hell out, or you will not get on your bus. Don't, she says. Shut up or get out. Grab your stuff and get off the property before I involve PD. No, please, I need to be on the bus. Then sit down and I don't want to hear another word from you for the rest of the night, I say. She would have been better off changing the bus schedules at that point. The bus driver told me a few days later that every pissed off person on that bus was jamming music and talking loudly because she was trying to sleep. I was really trying to be patient with her, but I gave her too many chances to calm down and I had to deal with too many people that wanted to fight me throughout the night to be any more patient with her. Once again, I've said it before, what is it with like night charter buses and horrible Karens? Feels like no matter where you are in the world, it's always terrible. This is why I don't take buses during the night. Yeesh. And moving along, our next story is titled, Fridge Handle. Okay, so this happened back in the summer of 2017, if I remember correctly. I had just started wearing dress shirts as a part of my regular everyday attire. Just wanted to be a bit more presentable. I also wore jeans, a black belt, and at the time, had a keychain. Anyway, I had to go to our local electronics shop. While I was there, I ended up having to wait, because one customer was having a chat with the cashier, and I didn't want to be rude. I started walking around the store, and suddenly, this guy, in his, I'd say, mid-40s, walks up to me and shows me a torn-off fridge handle. He starts laughing about it and telling me about how it was completely fine the day before, and suddenly it just snapped off while he was trying to open his fridge. Apparently, he had decided to walk straight thereafter to get a replacement handle. I, of course, not realizing that he'd mistaken me for an employee, figured if he wants to socialize, why not? We have a small idle chat, and after a while, our conversation shifts back to the fridge handle. That's when it hits me. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, I'm not an employee here, actually. Wait, really? I could have sworn I'd talked to you before. Now, the boss appears from the back room wearing the exact outfit as me. Dress shirt, jeans, black belt, and a keychain. We had an awkward laugh at that point, and he walked off to talk with the boss about the fridge handle. I also joked about it later on how I should have asked for a summer job there, since I already looked the part. I returned to wearing just regular old hoodies after that. 
It's always good to cap it off with the non-confrontational one, isn't it? And with that, it's all the time we have for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you so much once again for tuning into Life Stories. I hope you guys are all staying safe and clean during these crazy turbulent times. But don't forget, so you don't get bored, to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, all that stuff to make sure that all the Reddit content we got in the works for you doesn't get missed. My name is Trent, and I hope to see you guys soon.